Hello guys and welcome to the first SCIS UK's educational turtle videos. In these videos I'll be covering topics such as the life cycles of turtles, including reproduction. We'll cover the living environments of turtles, including the troubles they face um, from predators and the impacts humans have on them. I'll also be talking about keeping pet turtles and the best beginner species, as well as highlighting a lot of common species found in the pet trade. In this video, we'll talk about the history of turtles as well as the physical traits that make them turtles. So a little bit of background about me, um, I'm Vinny. You'll get introduced to her later in the video and you'll hear her screaming throughout. Um, I run Europe's only snapping turtle rescue in the century. Um, we also have run a reptile rescue, NKM Exotics, for the last 14 years. And we've taken in all sorts of animals. Um, the first one of my first pets was a Reeves turtle and you'll see him later. He's called Tika the little melanistic Reeves turtle and um, Yeah, so I have a huge passion in turtles and I thought I'd make these educational videos aimed at different stages of students learning and Hope that people can learn something from me. So let's crack on with the video So to start with we'll quickly go look at some turtles so to start with, we'll run through some basic anatomy of turtles. So the top of the shell here, this is what's called as the carapace. And the bottom, if I flip her over, that's called the plastron. And it's joined in the middle on each side. Or oh, she's a wriggly one. So this here is a map turtle, what's classed as a wachita map turtle. And they, like most animals, have two eyes. She has a set of nostrils there on the front of her face, just above her beak and the beak is made of keratin. Now the shell is made up of a bony structure as you'll see on the picture that I'll post up now. And on top, the color is actually held by what's called scutes and the scutes are made of keratin, just like our fingernails. And the same for her belly. Now she has four feet and a lovely long tail there. And the way you tell this is a female is because she has a flat plastron, whereas the males have a concave plastron. So what we have here is a full grown adult male Reeves turtle. Um, he's what's known as a melanistic Reeves. And this is where he's lost his juvenile colors and he has turned all black. Now he won't get any bigger than this. Um, and when you see the female, um, you'll see that this species has sexual dimorphism and we shall have a look at her now. So now when you look at the size of a full grown female you can see they are much larger than the males. Um, she's probably about eight inches whilst Tika over there is about four and a half and you can see the difference in their shells. She's a lovely light brown colour and where he has the melanism uh, he is nice and black and you can see her plastron there, it's lovely coloured, whereas his is all jet black. You can see that his plastron is just slightly curved inwards, and that is so he, in, during reproduction, he can sit on the back of the female and not have any barriers blocking him from getting in there. Now we've flipped her over, we can see just at the base of her tail, right here. That's what's called their cloaca, and that's where they excrete their waste from, and where they'll lay their eggs. Now you can see this map turtle, uh, she has a lovely pattern all over her. She is an adult female map turtle, we'll show you the male shortly. And they also have sexual dimorphism, so where the females are larger than the males. So all species of map turtles live in America. Um, they can be found in the Mississippi River, which is where you'll find the Mississippi map turtle. Um, the northern map turtles, go all the way up to Ontario in Canada and Quebec and they also can be found in the river basins. So here we have two fully grown adult male Reeves turtles. Now they're not that much different in size but where Tika is the melanistic you can see Boona here he is not melanistic so he has some patterns left on his plastron. Now in male turtles which Boona's playing very well here you can see the long tail and the cloaca is really really far down the tail and this is because they have hemipenes inside here which is their mating organs and they actually have two 
and they need room to house those. So during breeding, the hemipenes will come out of their cloaca and engage with the females. And that is how baby turtles are made. Now Boona is a lovely, lovely little male Reeves. Like I said, fully grown, even though he's it's quite a bit smaller than Tika here. So here we have another species of map turtle. This species is the Wachita map turtle, and you can tell the difference by their head markings. Just above the eyes there and the line down their snout, they're completely different to the other species of map turtle. Now this girl is a rescue that came into us, so she does have a bit of a poor shell, but it's growing really, really well. Now you can see the colour difference here. So this here is the fresh shell and all of these scutes by this one are ready to be shed and will come off in the next few weeks. This is the colour of her plastron. And you can see that there. Now, as I said before, the females, their club acres closer to the shell. This is because the eggs that will be made inside the shell need a way to come out. And if the cloaca was further down the tail then it would be harder for them to push the eggs out so it's closer to the shell this, this is the telltale sign of how to sex turtles and you can see her her cloaca is just there by my finger and it's much closer to the shell so this is another species of map turtle this is classed as the false map turtle again found in america she has a lovely shell this girl was grown here by me from a hatchling so she is in absolutely perfect condition now, as she moves away here, although she's not a snapping turtle, her nails are very long and they are quite sharp. So if I flip her over, you'll see her bare plastron and she has some stripes that carry on from her arm markings, but a completely plain plastron. And if you look very closely on her carapace, there's some underlying markings down under the scutes. She's a very beautiful turtle. Now something that she's displaying here quite well is her beak. You can see there, it looks just like a fingernail and that is how they crush any of their food. So here we have a yearling's common snapping turtle. Now their Latin name is Chilidra serpentina. Now as you can see here, they have big claws for digging. They have a very, very sharp beak for catching their prey eyes on the top of their head so they can poke their head out of the water with their snout get a good breath in of air now you can see this guy who's going to be very angry and show you why they're called snapping turtles and he's got a lovely shell slight keeling which helps them blend in at the bottom of rivers you can see here the spikes on their tail very like a dinosaur now if I can get him to show you the common snapping turtles have an extremely long neck compared to the alligator snapping turtles now common snapping turtles here you go he'll show you his long neck now common snapping turtles necks reach really far and it helps them catch their prey they are active hunters so they don't sit and wait for their prey they will go out and actively hunt it down Now, there you go, you saw him snap. Now, something that's interesting about snapping turtles is they can't really retreat into their shell. Their plastron is very small and very limited. As you can see here, it barely covers his limbs. His arms are very exposed. So this is why they became so aggressive and quite formidable against other species. It's because they're quite vulnerable if caught or hunted. So this guy is a male because his cloaca, as you can see here, you just push some liquid out. His cloaca is very close to his shell. So we can see just how long and sharp these claws are there. Now also if you look at their skin, their skin has these things called tubercles on and this is slightly like scales. So as we pick him up, he's an angry boy. Now if you look inside his mouth, you'll notice there's no law or vermifore, which the alligator snapping turtles do have, which we'll show you soon. So this big girl you can see here, her name is Hanji Zoe. Uh, she was actually named by the people that sponsor her at our turtle sanctuary. Now she is a full grown adult female common snapping turtle. And you can see just how big they get. Um, you can see her long neck there as she snaps back at me. <laughs> now this species isn't easy to handle. Uh, she weighs about 17 kilograms. But she has a nice healthy shell. Extremely long neck. 
and you can see the limited plaster on there again this is the size of her when she's on the floor you can see my hand and she is just an absolute massive turtle not something to be messed around with so here we have the alligator snapping turtle this latin name is macrochelles timoninki and this is actually the one of the largest freshwater turtles in the world and it is certainly the largest freshwater turtle in the North America. Now these guys are found all over the North, uh, Southeast America. Um, in some states they're in classes in that being endangered and in other states they're classed as pests and put on the invasive species list. Um, so this, these guys, as you can see, have a very spiky shell and as I said earlier in the video, this is to help them wedge into um, crevices in the rivers and lakes and help protect them from being swept away by any strong currents. It's also to offer them some protection when fighting off predators. Now this guy here is Mizog. He is very miserable, hence the name Mizog. Now as you can see, this species has a short neck when compared to the common snapping turtle. They also have a very large beak. Now, the thing about this species is they are sed a sedentary hunter. So they lie in wait for their prey. And this is exactly how they do it. Mizzle's showing you really, really well. They hold their mouth wide open. They hold their mouth wide open and they use that pink little worm in there that's known as a vermifore. Now they wriggle that worm and the fish will come swimming along and they'll go and try and eat the worm and this big old strong beak will slam down and catch the fish. As with the common snapping turtle, their plastron is very, very small and doesn't cover their limbs. So when they're flipped over like this, it leaves them very open to being hurt or injured by predators or anything else. Again, like common snapping turtles, they have these spikes on their tails and the nostrils are right up on the top of their nose so that they can sit with just their nose out of the water, get a breath of air and not have to expose themselves. So what you're looking at here is a razorback musk turtle. Now this is Ralph and she belongs to my friend Alex. Uh, now razorback musks are one of six species of musk turtle. Uh, they're a bottom dwelling species so they live at the bottom of lakes and rivers and ponds. And they're a very small species. Ralph here is fully grown and she won't get much bigger than this. And males and females tend to go to the same size. So the turtle you're looking at now is a diamondback terrapin. Now diamondback terrapins are the only true species of terrapin and they actually live in brackish water with the salt marshes and estuaries and tidal creeks. Now this means that the water is a mix of fresh and salt water and they're one of the only turtles adapted to live in salt water apart from sea turtles. They feed on fish, marine snails and crabs as well as clams and carrion which is animals that have died of other causes. Now the name terrapin actually derives from this species it's from a Native American language that refers to this species exactly, the Macramese terrapin. Now the turtle you're looking at now is Odin, kindly videoed by my friend Dudley from Dudley's Turtle Emporium. And he's a male diamondback terrapin. Now the diamondback terrapin in this video, that is Littlefoot, which is kindly videoed by my friend Nicky. And isn't he just gorgeous? So these turtles you're looking at now, these are what are called side neck turtles and they have an incredibly long neck. Um, when they're scared or threatened, they fold their neck along the side of their shell and they hide it away. Uh, there's other turtles which have even longer necks and they're called snake neck turtles. And it's quite ridiculous if you look just how long their necks are. They have very sweet endearing faces and just the, one of the longest necks of any turtle species. So the turtle you can see now is a male Chinese striped neck turtle and the female which you can see now is about five times his size. So sexual dimorphism is very very common in turtles. And then the next turtle which you'll see in a second is a red-eared slider. They come from America. There's a beautiful pattern on his carapace and red patches on the top of his head. 
uh, which he's show not showing you because he's a bit shy. And the next turtle you'll see is a wood turtle. They don't tend to spend all of their lives in water. They spend their life close to water, but spend a lot of time on land. Now this guy here is a beautiful map turtle. He's a black knobbed map turtle. And you can see this keeled um, scoops on the top of his shell. Very telltale of this species. Sea turtles, unlike other turtles, cannot retract any of their limbs into their shell. Um, this is just due to them spending 99% of their life in the ocean, and only females will come onto land uh, once or twice a year to lay eggs, and they lay these eggs in the beach, um, which you've probably seen in nature videos. Uh, so turtles don't have um, feet or claws, they have flippers. And this is to just make them as proficient as possible for swimming through the water. Um, they can cover hundreds of miles a day and tend to live in the same sort of waters for their entire life, although they are known to migrate. So something a lot of people don't know about sea turtles is that they have a very long time to mature to adult life, meaning that they spend about 30 years uh, maturing before they breed and mate and then the females go on to land to lay eggs. Um, now there's been sea turtles that have been documented for over a hundred years um, so they are very long lived genius of the turtles. So one of the largest sea turtles is the green sea turtle and they can get over four feet and weigh over 440 pounds and like sliders and soft shell turtles their shells are extremely smooth and makes them so streamlined for swimming through the water for dealing with the currents that the ocean has. Now turtles, tortoises and terrapins belong to a group of reptiles known as the Chelonians, uh, also testudines. That technically means that all tortoises, turtles and terrapins are all classes turtles. So around the world we have different names for the different groups. From sea turtles like loggerheads and leatherbacks to freshwater turtles like yellow bellied sliders and reef turtles. Around the world there are over 300 species of Chelonium, that's quite a lot. From the picture you have just seen in the video, uh, that is one of the earliest turtle shells that we've ever found as humans. And now the earliest turtle was dated over 298 million years ago, and these turtles were generally much larger than the turtles are today. As like dinosaurs, all animals, all plants were a lot bigger um, because they had bigger animals to contend with. They'd eat bigger food, and this would allow them to grow much bigger. And turtles, terrapins and tortoises are generally a really long lived species so they will live over in excess of 50 years for some smaller species of turtle and the larger tortoises and larger sea turtles at least sorry for the birds uh, can live over 100 years now we have some turtles here that are over 50 years old and we have some tortoises here that are over 60 years old Vinny, please be quiet and these turtles have successfully adapted to colonise every continent except Antarctica and they live in every ocean except the Arctic. It is just generally too cold for the cold blooded animals to live. So that means turtles are found in Europe, Africa, America, all over Asia, North and South America. With no native species to the UK, any turtles that you find here will be abandoned pets, likely dumped in ponds, rivers and lakes. This is where rescues like ours contribute to the survival of these abandoned pets. Most turtles are found in tropical countries due to the high temperatures that they need to survive. So turtles are very distinctive because of their shells. The shells are made up of two parts, the top being the carapace and the bottom being the plastron. Now the carapace is a very telltale way to tell how a turtle likes to live to life. So turtles like sea turtles, soft shell turtles and sliders all have smooth shells. And this is to help them proficiently move through the water smoothly and have as little drag as possible. Whereas turtles that spend a lot of their time on the bottom of the rivers and lakes tend to have 
killed shells because that as as the water levels rise or they live in any place with a type of current they need to wedge themselves under rocks and branches so they can stay in their area, preferred area now this is like snapping turtles where they have huge killed killed scoots and this helps them wedge like i said wedge into rocks and any crevice they can and it helps them also not be pulled out of these crevices by predators Now, although numerous animals from invertebrates to mammals have evolved shells, none has the architecture quite like the turtle. The carapace and plastron are bony structures that usually join one another along the sides. This creates a rigid skeletal box and it really helps protect them from predators. Now, this box, composed of bone and cartilage, is retained for the entire life of the turtle. They can't get out of their shell because the shell is an integral part of the body. The turtle cannot exit it nor can they shed the entire shell like a snake can shed their skin. Um, now the shell, just on the inside of the shell, their ribs actually help support that top carapace and their spine is fused to that back top of the carapace. The outer layer is covered in what's called scutes. Now these scutes hold the pattern of the individual species and these scutes are made of keratin. Now I'd quickly like to apologise in the video for the bird noises that you're hearing. I've got two um, conyers. This is a green cheek conyer. This is my girl Vinny. She's a beautiful girl, but when I'm over here, she's in her aviary over there. She just screams to be that out. So through some of the content you'll see, she'll be on my shoulder, and for others, she won't be because she'll have flown off somewhere else. But this is Vinny, up him. And she'll just hop about like this, and I'll pretend I'm a pirate. What I wanted to show you was one of these. Now this is a turtle skew that they've shed and um, this has come from the centre of the carapace and you can tell that by these little corner pieces that stick out there and I'll get it in the light box in a second and show you but this came from a red-eared slider and we'll have a look at it in the light box. So here we have that turtle skew and as I said this comes off the top part of the turtle shell which is the carapace you can see it's slightly see-through it's very thin thin as a piece of paper maybe a little bit thinner and this is what they shed and as you can see like I said it holds the pattern of the turtle this came from a red -head slider from the central center of their shell that's pretty cool and every few months they shed these and a new healthy um, scoot lives underneath and grows now some turtles are known as soft shell turtles this means that they have no bony protection, no hard carapace, no hard plastron. And instead, as described, they have a soft shell. This soft shell is quite rubbery and it's quite rough, although it is very, very smooth. These turtles are prone to predators as they make really easy prey because they don't have a hard shell that they have to bust through. All turtles have a beak, like a bird. This beak is made of keratin and the beak is imperative for helping them crack clam shells, snail shells, and eating and munching through fish. What we'll do now is cut to some footage of a soft shell turtle and you can see, take a look at how their shell is and at their long snout which is specialised for keeping them underwater so they can breathe without being spotted by birds of prey. Some species have an exposed beak and some species their skin actually covers their beak. Now speaking of their skin, they have a rubbery skin that's covered with scales and these scales allow them to live out the water and offer them some protection from sharp objects. So like other reptiles, they are cold blooded, or another word for this is ectothermic. This means that their body temperature matches that of their surroundings. So if they're in a cold water, their body temperature will be cold. Now to warm up, they have to haul themselves onto land or any floating objects that are in their lake, water or river system. And they have to bask in the sun. They have to use an external source of 
heat like the sun. Now most species will hold themselves out of the water and bask on the banks of the rivers or lakes or on branches or floating objects in the water. Some species like the musk turtle are quite shy baskers so they do something which is called cryptic basking which means that they just stay at the, just on the surface of the water or just very close to the water or uncovered by branches or leaves. Now this offers them some protection but also, allow, also allows them to get the beneficial UV from the sun. Once fully worn through these turtles will head back to the water where at this optimum temperature they can properly digest their food and their body can perform all the processes it needs. Now the reason they bask in the sun is because the sun gives off infrared light as well as UV as well as a lot of other types of light which you've probably learned about through the light spectrum. Now the sun dries their shells out which stops fungal infections and bacterial growth and it plays an essential part in their lives. The UV is important as it offers them the ability to synthesize vitamins such as vitamin D3 and this is essential for calcium uptake and absorption. Now the calcium uptake and absorption as well as uh, the protein part of their diet is what allows them to create their perfect shells. Without this, which it can be seen um, during the captive keeping hobby, they come out with some deformed shells because they just aren't provided with the right vitamins. Another thing we need to talk about is that turtles breathe air, just like mammals and just like us humans. They're not like fish, they can't absorb oxygen through the water. Um, so they have to, they use their nostrils, which you've seen in the video, to rise to the surface and they'll take in a lung full of air and they can then hold their breath from anywhere from five minutes to over an hour, depending on the species. While they hold their breath, they'll be swimming in the water, searching for food or safe places to hide. To survive, soft-shelled turtles have adapted longer snouts, as I can show you here. And this allows them to stay further under the water whilst being able to rise up and get that breath of air. So that's it for the first installation of these videos. Um, we have three more videos coming up covering the turtles environment. We will also cover um, reproduction and hibernation and we will also cover keeping turtles as pets. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it's been informative and you can learn some things from it. Um, we haven't gone as in-depth as possible um, and they, those videos will follow. We're trying to aim these videos at different stages of students learning. Um, so these videos are a bit more basic and we'll have videos aimed at higher learning students and then proper turtle keepers with all the full information and breakdown of some of the latest research. So that's it from me guys, me and Vinny. I hope you've, as I said, I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video.